Hello everyone and welcome back to 4Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. When we last left this save, this space plane was sort of blowing up a lot in Leif's atmosphere. And I've basically concluded that there's no altitude at which it will be safe for it to enter the atmosphere. And the question is whether that's because I have used the medium wing parts on this, or whether even the heavy wing parts would have the same problem. The heavy wing parts have a higher heat tolerance, 1500 Kelvin, but that's not necessarily good enough to deal with this situation. So, well, we'll test a heavy version of this in orbit around Kerbin to see if it works better, and then use it as a rescue craft for this. Basically, we only have Huddle and Kerbin in here, so if we send one more Kerbal, uh, Huddle can go over into that other craft, and then potentially continue the mission if it turns out that it's okay to land at Leif. Uh, so we'll just actually for now boost this up so that it's in the safe orbit instead of trying to bring it down into the atmosphere of Leif. Right now it's in orbit of Leif but the periapsis is in Leif's atmosphere. It doesn't really have enough delta V to get back home anymore so it would need rescuing anyway. But we are going to go back to doing Kerbin orbit tests and this time with the heavy wings we'll make sure that it can at least survive a Kerbin re-entry and then it's still a question of whether it can do a uh, Leif re-entry. So let's see. Or Leif entry. I'll get to 60 kilometers. Okay, so Hudlin will sort of hang out here and let's check that science. Well, just a little bit of crew observations here. Okay, so let's go to the Research and Development Center where we need to unlock the heavy wings. 5,000 science. Well, that's all of our science. <laughs> so, well, good thing, uh, good thing we got that science then, huh? Yep, okay, fine, fine. We'll get it. It's called Space Planes. Presumably that means the parts will not explode during re-entry, right? That's what that means? Well, we're, we're about to find out. Let's get that away. Okay, so the problem is these just keep blowing up. So, we are going to try the heavy wing pieces, the large ones, which have higher heat tolerance and impact tolerance. The problem is that the medium wing is one ton and the heavy wing is five tons. And let's just check that they still haven't added scaling to that five ton weight. Okay, so that's ten tons because there's two of them. Now, if I reduce that... Well, let's say it's like that and really small. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Large wing will produce more lift than the small wing. But it doesn't have more mass right now. So that's a that's a plane for you. Uh, so we don't want to use the large wings. So I'm gonna cheat and we're gonna use the large stabilizers instead. Let me just load this again. Now will that be a problem? I don't know. I mean there's no obvious reason to think that that's going to be a problem. They have the same max temp and the same impact tolerance and they have no other stats. Stabilizers also have a control surface. The control surfaces, all moving control surfaces are actually heavier than the stabilizers. So, yep. Well, this is by way of encouraging them to actually make the mass change when we rescale it. It's not act I mean, I don't think that should be that hard actually, to be honest. Um, procedural parts if in Kerbal Space Program one a long time ago. Maybe I should just I just want to cover that this tank here, so. Hmm. Well, that's yet another new wing design. I don't think we need canards if it's like this, but I don't know if these will have enough pitch control. 
There's the center of lift really there. Will this really survive entry? I guess we're going to find out. Leif shuttle heavy, let's say H. All right, let's try it. Just watch all the wings fall off immediately. That hasn't happened though. In the previous version, they would all fall off. And in older versions, it was even worse. But uh, clearly the auto strutting has worked out. Okay. I haven't tweaked the controls at all. We'll just see how they do. It's not accelerating very fast. Oh my god. The landing gear is actually getting torched by the engines. No. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it seems like we're not going very fast because the landing gear is actually blocking the engine thrust. So we've learned that that's possible. Probably we should make sure that the wings aren't then. We'll have to raise these up a bit. Okay. Let's change to fly safe again. Whenever I undo something, it goes to fly safe. And it is a net improvement over the other design that we sent to Leif, if only because I actually am using fewer wing pieces and they're lighter. So... That's better. That's the acceleration I was expecting. It's puzzle why we weren't going fast enough. And it looks like the stabilizers get plenty of lift. No problems there. I wonder how much drag they get compared to the wing pieces. Not a bad wing shape. But will it keep our parts safe? Will the wing itself be safe? That's actually the first problem. We probably do want drop tanks still if we can get them. Okay, that blinking is annoying me. No, there's nothing here. As I knew there wouldn't be. In theory, if we put RCS on it, we can steal fuel from the other one that's stranded in Leith Orbit. But we would have to put RCS and then we would need the Mark Appellant. So that we can dock using that docking port to the other one. Okay, time to break the sound barrier. And technically we've passed Mach 1 right there, it's just that we need to be more decisive about it. I don't know why we've used more fuel this time than the first try with the other plane. With the medium wings. That's interesting, we only used half the fuel to get to this point before. Maybe that means the wings are causing more drag. Okay, well, we better just light that. Okay, uh, let's just cut it there. And we'll coast. We could potentially do with less wing if it means less drag. But then again, lathe. We do have to think about lathe. Then it's thinner atmosphere and taking off from there. But we'll be lighter there too. Uh, well, let's wait a little bit and round that out better. Joystick support. KSP1, even when I first started, uh, started playing it, supported my joystick and throttle just fine. <laughs> And it, it, it's a Unity thing. Unity actually control uh, manages the controllers. Uh, I wonder if we can configure the controllers right now. Let's see. 
settings. I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna say, all right, pitch. This, uh, yes, proceed. Pitch up. No, 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 no. See. Pitch, pitch up. Pitch down. Okay. Yeah. Yes. This one. Y'all left. See, this is what happens. I can my it reads my joystick just fine for pitch up and pitch down. But can it do the twist of the joystick for y'all? No. And can it do roll? Uh well, pretty quickly. So It can do the roll, it just doesn't understand the twist axis on the joystick. Something that KSP1 has never had a problem with. <laughs> um, throttle. I'll, I'll just use the joystick. See, it, it, oh, okay, wait. Um, well, the problem is the throttle has a button and it's reading the button. It's not reading the axis for the throttle and it's just, uh, the same joystick. I've got a separate throttle. I'm not using that so I don't confuse it. If I use that, it, it also still only reads the buttons on the throttle, not the axis on the throttle. And also this is reverse. The one that says pitch up is actually what you use for pitch down. Well, right around there is where I'll heal it. And we'll make it gentler. We'll go 30 kilometers. I went 23 last time. Want to give it every chance to survive. Okay, that is 30. And this time I won't go to map view. We'll keep an eye on it to see what happens because last time I went to map view and things happened that I did not actually see. <sighs> SAS though. SAS and space planes. I think it gets confused by the control surfaces when they're not actually usable. At least it certainly does a worse job of turning than it does otherwise. But another thing that might be causing the worse turning is the fact that the reaction wheel inside the Mark III cockpit has 40 torque for pitch, 40 tor torque for yaw, and 20 for roll. Having uneven numbers like that might confuse SAS, I don't know. It's a possibility. Okay, we are now in the atmosphere. Will Tim C be a lucky Kerbal once again, or not? Oh no. Oh no! Please, it was a gentle re-entry. I promise. I don't consider using the full heavy wings to be necessarily feasible because that'd be 20 extra tons that we're putting on here instead of the four that we've got right now. But will they do better than this? I don't know. They have the same heat tolerance. So I don't have any reason to believe that putting the full heavy wings instead of these stabilizers will make any difference. We're still in the high atmosphere and not slowing down that much, even. Oh, 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 oh. It's not blinking anymore. So, is it just barely capable of re-entering like this? Alright, well, we survived it looks like with these. But does that mean that this can survive at length? That seems like a whole other story, isn't it? Now, for lathe, we don't really need to use this fuel until we hit lathe's atmosphere. 
We could have extra drop tanks on the side for the transfer. We could strap them on the side. We are overshooting the KSC by quite a lot, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> We've got 4,000 meters per second with the swerve. I think we can figure it out. There's a thing right there, 40 kilometers. Seems to be in mid-air too. I don't know what that is. I did not put air brakes on this version. Uh, uh, okay, be careful. We're going very fast still. It's tough to do a coordinated turn with this. Without having joystick control. Okay, let's use some engine power while it's still got ISP at the higher altitude. I really don't want to use jet engines, but I didn't action group them and I don't feel like it right now. Something like that. So, will this be my first successful space plane in KSP2 with Force Science and the re-entry heat? Barely, I mean, but still successful, or is there some nasty surprise waiting for us? I'm just pleased that I did a very good boost back. We got a lot of things over there. So, you chase. Remember, don't extend your landing gear above 150 meters per second. They definitely have problems like that. I don't know which runway I'm supposed to line up with. Uh, probably the right one. Gosh darn it. Hate controlling planes with keyboard. Well, we're coming back within an inch of our lives. The overheating indicators on the wings were blinking cr like crazy. So, alright, gear down. Okay, maybe I want to go a little bit to the left. <laughs> like I'm getting points in flight sim or something. Okay, stop. Well, not that fast. Gently. Do not scrape the swerve, please. Ugh. I could have probably made that taxiway right there. But let's just stop. Don't go on to the swerve. Okay. Well, successful flight, but barely. And does that mean anything about how we're going to do at Lathe? Hmm. Anyway, recover vessel. Tim C is once again a lucky Kerbal. What the heck is the camera doing? Uh, so the way we launched it to Leif last time was uh, like that. But we have to replace this shuttle and it wasn't super stable when we did this. Okay, but we definitely didn't have enough Delta V last time. So I'm going to slap on some additional hydrogen tanks to help. We've already got one over there. Maybe I can keep them off and turn them on later. Maybe that's a good idea. But can the launcher handle this extra? Well, right now it's not. The extra load. They are hydrogen tanks, so they're very light. We do want the nuke lighting on the ground. As weird as that is, it's the only thing helping the balance here. So, uh, well, let's just put that down there for thrust weight ratio reasons. Well, it seems like it can still lift it. Supposedly. But, 
What about after the boosters? I believe the 1.27. I definitely don't believe the 2.82. Or 2.76 either. I mean, this is the 1.27 that's saying right there. So I don't know where the 2.82 comes from. Maybe we need more boosters. Maybe I need to have nose cones on these. So, well... I don't know if their drag is that significant or not. Is it worth 1.3 tons? Should I just have a really small nose cone to close off the node? Is that how drag works? So many questions that I haven't experimented on. I didn't realize that was a 2.5 meter one. That's... is that new? Anyway. Uh, oh, I haven't unlocked the large ones. Oh, maybe we should... Oh, no, I don't have any signs. Oh, I didn't know they had made different size ones. Okay. Uh, let me just see where the large ones are. Hold on. Large payloads. Oh yeah, that's pretty light. Unfortunately, it would cost us uh, 5,500 to get it, and we we don't have that. I guess the other option is, well, no, I mean the fairing is still heavy, 1.125. That really is a really good deal. Okay, well, little nose cones it is. Okay, who's our victim? Sean Das looks confident. Okay. Do we want to dock? Hold on, let's revert in. We'll just slap on some RCS ports. I wonder if they'll explode <laughs> on the way up. Okay, well that's just to make use of the 0.4 tons of mop propellant if we so happen to want to dock and grab the fuel from the other thing. Alright, how badly balanced is this? Um, probably pretty badly balanced. We just added more mass to this side. Hopefully, it's Tim C. Oh gosh. Tim C went in instead of the Kerbal that we were trying to put in. Well, what happened to... Is Shonda still on the pad somewhere? Alright, Jed and Kermit it is. I don't know where Shondas went, but yeah, does anybody know where Shondas went? Alright. Uh, this could be very badly balanced because I've just added more fuel. Let's hope for the best. And launch. Oh, well that's not too bad. Uh, it's tilting. <laughs> We'll go straight up for a while, for sure. Well, when I say straight up, I mean like... Oh gosh. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Glide sail. Well, we can't limit the... Uh, no! Okay, I need to thrust limit something. Okay, you. Less, less thrust. Less thrust. Oh no! I'm trying to pull up. Okay, we have to let go of him. Oh, okay, okay. Oh! Ah. Poor... What? What's the Kerbal's name again? Oh well. Everything's zero meters to us now. Oh, wait. Hmm. Oh, I can't switch vessels to anything. Uh... Leave him dead. Well, that the shot is such as shuttle life. Bet you Shondas is back now. Shondas I took one look at the stack and went, nope. Okay, so what we need to do... 
is add boosters to the side. <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, Shulkin Kerman. <laughs> that is a tight fit, folks. That is a tight fit. Center of Thrust is just not going to help me. Um, well, but everything is all over the place, so. Uh, go over there. Actually, just be part of that group. Somehow, Shondas just ran away, went AWOL. Okay, fine. This, this is how it's gonna be. Let's try it again! Oh, come on! No, 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 we've, we've killed, no, no. <laughs> It'd be nice if the center of thrust marker would actually tell me things, so. Okay, now it's telling me. <laughs> now it's decided to show me something. Now, now it's tilted again. Why does it have to do that? Can't it just stay straight so that I can see the truth? That's oriented properly? Okay. Okay. Barely okay. Lots of thrust though. We are past the speed of sound. I'm not throttling down. It's pointless. Our apoapsis is already pretty high. I can't... I'm pulling up as hard as I can. I can't pitch down anymore. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. 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 We're going too high and retrograde. Weak. Don't kill anything. Okay. This way. Um. <laughs> Point down. It's fine. Hydrogen. I got to figure this out somehow. Okay. So that one. That's the one we want out, and fine, everything else is in, but not yet. Now I also have to worry about the fact that these two tanks are a little bit higher up and what that'll mean for the swerves thrust through the center of mass. Maybe if I had, well, there wasn't much space up front either, so... Okay, we'll deorbit that stage, but first let's transfer what hydrogen there is in there out. Okay. Um, let's just separate it. Uh, it'd be better off if we were pitched. Oh, whatever. Uh, go. Go away. Okay. Good enough for now. I'd rather have the outer tanks drained. We can enable fuel crossfeed now. So, uh, well, we have a whopping 8,970 meters per second according to that. That's nice. That's a nice thing to have. Do I know that's telling me the truth? Not exactly. Depends on how it feels about staging those tanks. It's not entirely clear about that situation. Let's probably do a little bit of radial in there. Okay. We'll just correct the rest as part of a mid-course correction. Okay, well... Looks like the tank placement isn't too bad. Oh, too far. Uh, we'll just mid-course correct that. 
But I might want to send some support this time instead of just... Where the heck is that ending up? Oh, that must be on the next orbit around. Yeah, probably we'll have to send some support stuff. And so I'll launch that next time. We're just gonna make sure that this is on its way. But since we're at the jewel window, I'll leave it here and we'll send out our stuff later. No, oh, one degree's not bad, but can we like encounter Lathe and get help? It's like very good. Well, it looks like we have a periapsis there. So that would be a pretty good deal if we can do that. 148 meters per second for the correction, but it'll also get us a capture. But yeah, since I want to stay at the jewel window for the other missions I'll cook up, we'll just leave it here. Make sure it is recharging. And will this Leif shuttle work now with its heavy wing pieces? Well, not really wing pieces, stabilizers. Hmm, they have more heat tolerance and they sort of barely survived an entry into Kerbin. I'll still use the engine to capture around Lathe, because definitely going into its atmosphere with the engine is a bad idea, but will it even be able to survive going into the atmosphere after it's captured? I don't know. Alright, so with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.